welcome. Today we talk about your term in Sassin DCS, hopefully for the last time. But I will be using a different approach, fewer charts and numbers and more visuals. If you don't like it, blame this guy. I have created a couple of scenarios where the AI shoots at pretty much the same time a number of different missiles. These include A120C5, Phoenix, SD10, R27ER and others. The idea is showing how they behave, which one performs better and other peculiarities. Both scenarios are set at 40,000 feet, VC is about Mach 2, 0 TA, 0 ATA, and the targets are a bunch of B1s flying at Mach 0.9. The launch range is about 13 nautical miles at YC runs, let's introduce our guests. The Phoenix in DCS comes in four flavors, but here I represented only the C versions. Next, the R27ER. The Soviet era missile is possibly the fastest missile in the game. And as shown in a recent video, with a bit of loft, it can almost double its performance. The A120C5 is the most recent version of the famous Abram in DCS, the other version is the A120B. Finally, the Chinese Marvel, the SD10 or PL12. Various sources claim on the internet, and thus should be taken with a metric ton of salt, that is somewhat in between the A120B and the C, so let's see how it fares here. As we're seeing, the R27ER has incredible acceleration and it reaches the target first, and it is surprising how little energy it bleeds while it's flying straight. The SD10 easily outperforms the M120C5, and finally, a couple of days later, here come the two Phoenix C. To better understand what we've seen, let's have a brief look at some charts. Values are approximated via attack view. Peak speed, nothing impressive besides the R27ER that is basically hypersonic, given how close it is to Mach 5. The two M54s are not particularly impressive, but they travel almost vertically and burn for a very long time, up to 27 seconds, in case of the Mark 47 rocket motor. The Apex makes the different strategies adopted by the missiles to reach the targets very clear. Ludicrous speed and flat for the R27ER, stratosphere for the Phoenix, and something in between for the SD10 and the Amram. Separation and time uh, flight are closely related. The quicker the missile flies, the greater the separation between the target and lesser the flight time, although the loft trajectory must be taken into consideration. If a missile is flying in a particularly curved trajectory, the amount of road it needs to cover is drastically higher. To express this phenomenon using a different perspective, I calculated the horizontal average speed, ergo the speed, following a straight line to get from the launch to the target, minus the speed of the target. Finally, the speed and impact. This characteristic is quite interesting, as a missile reaching its target at a very slow speed is easily defeated. The results are surprising, for example, the M54C Mark 47, despite being the slowest initially, reaches the target faster than anyone else seen at the SD-10. Speaking of which, this missile is very good. It is quite fast throughout its entire envelope and also maintains energy very well. Next test, same scenario, shorter range. This time, circa 15 article miles. I also added the Super 530D, the M7MH, which is fundamentally like the PE, just a pint lighter, and the R77. For whatever reason, one of the Tomcats decided that he didn't want to shoot anymore, so I collected the results for the Mark 47 later. Let's also introduce the first element that should help us understand why different missiles perform so differently. The year they were introduced, and when their baseline model was introduced, M7 and M54 easily win the Missile Grandpa trophy. Let's have a look at the results now. The peak speed shows how explosive the R77 and the Super 530D are, otherwise no surprises. The Apex is interesting and shows how the SD10 and the M120 loft, and how the Sparrow tries to sneak into this fancy group as well. The Phoenix does not loft uh, within circa 20 nautical miles as we know. Separation, time of flight, and the horizontal average speed highlight how good the R77 and the Super 530D perform overall. The surprises show up in the speed and impact. Besides the R27ER and the SD10 blowing everyone else away, we see the M54 doing well, the Mark 47 in particular, albeit being one of the slowest. Before moving to the conclusions, a brief parenthesis about manual lofting. 
The A120C5 we have in DCS seems to have a few drawbacks at long range compared to the M54, isn't it? However, in DCS we can manually loft all sorts of missiles and they gain incredible advantages. What you're looking at is a 50 nautical miles shot, same geometry, of an A Mark 47 launched by the AI and an A120C5 lofted manually at 30 degrees. The results show how the AMRAM is arriving earlier, faster and with greater terminal speed. The M120 arrives faster at 50 nautical miles than 30 nautical miles thanks to the additional manual loft, thus defeating a dedicated long range missile in its courtyard. Note that lofting the Phoenix helps a little bit to increase its terminal speed, which is fundamental to decrease the chances of seeing the missile kinematically defeat post a pole. I do not have DJF-17 and I have trialed it already, so I cannot test the SD-10, but I've been told that it behaves even better than 110C5 when manually lofted. The R27ER can be lofted as well, as I discussed in a previous video. The performance gain is out of range, as it almost doubles its speed and impact. I've quickly tried again using this scenario, and then R27ER launched at 38 nautical miles and it impacted at Mach 2.89. This is really crazy stuff. As mentioned, the M7 and the M54 easily win the missile grandpa trophy, but there is more to that, and this is one of the problems with the sandbox approach of DCS. Or, better phrased, the game allows complete freedom, and complete freedom is subject to subjectivity. Servers can include all sorts of weapons and modules, even modules post-2000 with their updated and often arguable Detalink, RWRs, Raiders, into a 90s brawl. But anyway, back to the era discussion, let's include the M120 to have a wider view. Through the history of these missiles, there are defining moments where their performance spiked, so to speak. For example, the passage from the M7E to the M7F and later M saw the range doubling, new and improved seekers being used and so on. Later, with the MH and P, lofty trajectory was introduced to improve performance at long range. The A120, born out of the experience with Sparrow and Phoenix, was great from the start. However, it doubled, if not more, in range, passing from the A and B versions to the C. The seeker was improved as well and made more resistant to countermeasures and electronic countermeasures. The Phoenix received a major overhaul in 1986 with a brand new seeker and guidance, which dramatically improved its capability against maneuvering targets. However, the rocket motor stayed the same. The missile actually got heavier from 448 kilograms, so 978 pounds, to 465 kilograms, so 1026 pounds, almost as much as the old warhead of the Amram. It may not sound much, but for a missile already heavy, this does not help, and the improved guidance does not offset it nearly as much, at least in DCS. Ergo, contrary to the other missiles, the Seeker got much better, but the kinematics worsened. Another can of worms is the geopolitical landscape post Cold War which contributed to the cancellation of the AIM-152 and had many other effects. Finally, let's put the most common missiles on a timeline and have a quick look at them. Something many players forget is that the P-47 is closer, time-wise, to the Tomcat than the Tomcat to the JF-17. If we now look back and keep in mind this timeline while still watching the first part of this video, we are, perhaps, less surprised. By now, it should be clear how the Phoenix is an ancient missile. It fares greatly against missiles of its era, but it's mediocre at best when thrown into the mix with modern ones. The SD-10 is instead a brand new missile for the standards of DCS, and I wonder how a lofted SD-10 fares against an MBDA Meteor. Um, I'm not even joking. The R-27ER, and probably the ET as well, are indeed surprising missiles. I played them a lot in the old Nomak 20 years ago, and they are incredible now. The R27ER is fast and seems almost immune to drag, which is somewhat surprising given that this missile is longer than a Phoenix and almost that thick. The A120C5 AMRAM looks uh, okay. It's not the most recent missile, and it has been subject to multiple changes in DCS, properties and logic wise. Let's see if ED has more work in their pipeline for it. Speaking of AMRAM, I'm wondering why there is no early AMRAM in game. It would be nice addition to the early 90s missions. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this different approach and found it useful. Thanks for watching and take care.